Exclamation, everybody! And welcome back to the Livecraft Mine server. I have been, uh, I, I will admit, I have been procrastinating as far as getting another episode out. Uh, I This one will probably go out on my normal time. I did not do a second one this week. Uh, and I may not do a, a second one uh, or last week. And then I may not do a second one next week either. Uh, it really depends. Uh, m the problem I'm running into, uh, to be honest and truthful, is I... I'm still collecting some resources that I want to do some builds, and I'm also having some trouble sort of focusing on what exactly I want to do, you know, trying to get a good uh, a good flash of inspiration. So I'm sort of, uh, you know, farting around with things as I tend to do. But I've been doing quite a bit off camera. I did a lot, a lot of adventuring the last couple of days. That's also the other reason. I haven't done a whole lot of building, just a lot of adventuring. Uh, this is the first I've sat down and actually started to improve my area and not being out and about in other areas. I was looking um, for a mesa, and uh, yesterday, uh, Captain Lamp and um, Puka and myself went out uh in a Skype call, and we just kind of looked around for for a good uh, mesa biome. We found one, thankfully. Um, there's a portal down there now, so everything should be good to go. We should be able to the entire server should now be able to get out there and get the various clays that they need. And I'll be paying a visit to there soon enough. I also need to pay a visit to Puka's um, desert area because I'm going to need lots and lots of sand. I have quite a bit. Uh, for glass, but I, I converted it all over to glass and I haven't actually uh, used it for other things, which I, I intend to do here. I still have a lot of projects in my head. It's just uh, I haven't put any out, haven't been putting out videos because I haven't had the chance to really sit down and start building stuff. <laughs> uh, but I figure I can sit down and start building stuff right now uh, whilst I whilst I talk to you guys. Now you can see. My storage area, since the last time you've seen it, has gotten an improvement. It is larger than it was, and it I now have a fascia over top of what was behind here in the little maintenance area. You see this is a, a freaking mess back here, but uh, in front it actually looks halfway decent. And I've expanded it out. I've gotten a lot more iron than I can fiddle around with, and I've expanded out uh, my offerings here. Now this line... Oh, I hear a, a zombie very close by. This line here, hopefully he hasn't spawned back in my maintenance area. <laughs> I don't think he has. I think that's outside that I'm hearing. Because uh, I have this pretty well lit up. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty well lit up. Um, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. So this line here, this, this wall, is going to be all the resources that are just the sort of the raw resources. So... Uh, I have the raw granite, the raw wood logs. This is jungle wood. I found several, several jungle um, areas while I was looking for a mesa. Found three <laughs> jungle temples, and I have fully raided them. So I have a bunch of, I got a bunch of redstone uh, repeaters and stuff out of that, and some pistons. I have some sticky pistons now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I've been expanding out with seeds and various other things here. So that's this wall, and that will continue on further once I get more iron to, to play with it. And then this wall over here is going to be the sort of refined refined resources. Uh, and I say that staring directly at the dirt and at the obsidian. Uh, obviously these aren't refined, but I'm not going to have so much of it that I'm going to need it to be in the storage area. Uh, dirt I would have a lot of, except uh, I've used dirt as my filter. Uh, block so I can't I can't have dirt go through this system because it'll just come into this box into this chest here because it'll just see the dirt in there and just think that it can it can live there so unfortunately that's why the dirt is out here again hopefully I won't have such an abundance of dirt that I needed to go through a sorting system and what I might actually do is man that guy is really close where the hell is he at oh there's <laughs> There's an Enderman right here. <laughs> okay. You found a dark spot. Congratulations. Now die. That damn Endermite. Uh, I 
didn't think this was dark enough for him to be there, but apparently it is. Now I can't get rid of that guy. He's going to be there forever and ever. Did he drop anything? No. <laughs> stingy. Stingy Enderman. That's the last thing I need in my house, or stingy Enderman. <laughs> um, so as I was saying before we were rudely interrupted, uh, I might do something where I can get the dirt to come over to here and just, you know, maybe short circuit it up here. Maybe I'll have uh, hoppers that go off and say, hey, you know, if you're dirt, just come this way and, and come over here. I might be able to do that. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what I can what I can fool around with there as far as that as far as that is concerned. This is a refined material, obviously the stone bricks. I'm using lots and lots of them right now. Uh, I have a bunch of stone down in the uh, in my uh, ravine there where th that has the uh, my auto smelter in it, and I'll show you sort of the setup of that eventually. I'm not going to show you today probably. This is my this is all the stone I've been getting from that down there as well. And I have various stairs and various slabs. Although, is this has this fixed? Nope. <laughs> Cobblestone name still does not have a I18N name yet. <laughs> Somebody messed that up in the snapshot. And I gotta fix this. I gotta fix the floor here. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about this wall yet because this is gonna keep going out that way. Uh, and the torches, as always, are all. They are all temporary. Uh, I will find out, I'll figure out a better lighting solution for this area. That looks a little bit better. And then this is a regular uh, furnace and a regular crafting bench here, just as a manual intervention whenever I want it. So that is good. That is where I'm at there so far. This outside here is not going to stay this way, although this does look kind of cool. It's probably, it's not going to stay that way. I'm going to change this to something else. Uh, probably. Um, probably, uh, what, what am I thinking of? Uh, sand, sandstone, probably sandstone. Uh, maybe the smooth sandstone. We'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm thinking that would look better as a wall texture than what I have here now. And I'm going to do some, you know, fancy, fancy stuff along the way too. Kind of spruce it up even more. Uh, up in here, I'm going to figure something out eventually. Right now it's just going to stay open like that. Up here, though, I kind of want to have a little bit of a a um, a little bit of a kitchen area. So I don't know why phone getting a phone call <laughs> very very unprofessional with a phone call coming in. Uh, and then here I have to figure out how I'm going to do this. I, I I'm trying to work around this um, this side side entrance here as much as I can. Uh, to figure out how things are going to look. I think, I was thinking of, I, I would make this wood right here. Um, I'm not sure if that's really the case or not. Yeah, this guy must be outside. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know if I should make that the regular wood or if I should use the stone bricks. I kind of did the stone bricks around the other side. See like that. And then I can make this wall, uh, stone bricks up to that point, perhaps. So that looks like it. It's uh, it's not too bad, although it looks a little bit too off center. I might make this wood right here. What the hell? Why is why? Don't, why am I hearing lava? Where's this lava at? What's going on here? What are you doing up here, guy? Besides being loud. Somebody somebody pouring lava on my place here? No. I guess hmm. I guess because it's raining, he must have been it must it's still daytime, so I guess he was burning and then the rain was causing him putting him out. I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is this guy sees me. Damn creepers. Yeah, getting getting lots of lag too, so I can't really fight too many mobs uh, right now. Uh, they seem to be lagging out quite a bit, but I will take all this coal. I meant to collect this at some point anyway, so I guess now is as good time as any. So uh, this episode, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and get some work done on the inside of my place. 
I'm going to try to spruce it up a bit. So let me just collect this right now while, whilst I talk. And I'll just throw a torch down real fast. I'll have to fix this a little bit so it doesn't look so bad. Uh, I'll just do that right there. Very good. I'm not going to worry about that coal just yet. I'm really just, I don't really need the coal. I'm just getting it because I need the levels. <laughs> I don't have, we do have a skeleton grind, grinder thanks to uh, Chaffee and Puka. Um, so we can get some XP from that back at the spawn area. Uh, but I'm trying to use what I have available to me in the in immediate area. So I might build myself a XP grinder at some point just to help out with the level stuff until we get an ender uh, an enderman farm going for the server. Uh, ooh, I got some got some granite here. Let's just throw that. Oh, that that torch. <laughs> Did not mean to place that torch up there. Thank you. Uh, let's just throw that granite in there now that it gets sorted out. Awesome. All right. Um, so what do I want to do in here? I want to. I think I want to make this a pillar, this an actual pillar here. I want to, you know, sort of make these uh, stairway up here. Uh, oh, I forgot. I have a a um, brewing stand now. I actually have a bunch of blaze rods. I went into the nether uh, off camera uh, with some snowballs and took out some blazes. Also, uh, also uh, got owned <laughs> by a couple. I, I stayed in there a little bit too long, but I was able to collect up all my stuff again so that uh, ended up working out all right in the end uh, and all this stuff in front here is eventually going to move I think I can get everything out of this chest though and at least move that away oh, there was actually some rotten flesh in there I forgot about too how about that um, yeah I'll just throw them in there right now what I want to do while I'm thinking about it I'm not going to do it this episode because I think I'm going to have to do it off camera. Just try to figure it out properly. But I want to, uh, this is the thing I forgot to mention here. I want to, on this wall, also have the ability to throw in, say, cobblestone or netherrack and have it actually go into an auto smelter and then come out into its various products. Um Pro maybe on this wall. I don't know if I'll integrate it with this wall or if I'll integrate it with this wall. It probably makes more sense to put it over here because it should be sort of a separate mechanism, you know, where I can just toss things into a chest maybe over here and have them go in through the auto smelting system. Um, I would like to also, in addition to that, get, since I have that lava down below, I want to be able to load up you know, the lava into a minecart and send the minecart up here and have it unload into a, into the proper hoppers. And then just that way I have, I have it all locked and loaded and ready to go for, for stuff, for resources. So that's the other portion of the storage area that I want to work on. But again, I'll do that in another episode right now. Right now, I think I'm going to to, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to cut away and do some building, but, um, I feel like I, I feel like I could probably stay here and talk a little bit because I, I remember, I remember that I wanted to, uh, I had a request from, from Tin, uh, Captain Tin to, uh, for my latest, do I have enough resources? Probably not. Uh, let me just make some more here. I had a request from Captain Tin uh, on my one of my uh, Cube Rambling episodes to sort of sit around and, and kind of chat about myself, chat about uh, what, uh, who am I, and 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 what what am I doing here, and why 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 am I why am I so derpy here? Why is this not working? Did I do? Oh, I put stone bricks in there. <laughs> that is why it's not working. Uh, <laughs> making more stone bricks out of stone bricks. We've got stone brick exception right now. Um, so I figure you know, it's not really a topic that fits in well with cube ramblings. Although, with mm, that that was not was not what I wanted. I get these stones off of here. Um, do I have stone bricks? Stone bricks. There we go. Um, 
it's not really a topic that fits in well with uh, cube ramblings, although it could. I mean, I, technically I can ramble on about anything I want there. But the reality is I, I try to keep that sort of on track with uh, gaming-related topics as much as I possibly can. Uh, so I figured that would be a good thing to talk about here. And so this is going to be kind of a talky episode, but also I'm going to be trying to do some building while I talk. So it's it's not it's not going to be the most exciting building you've ever seen in your life, but you know it's it's something. Um, so who am I, and and why why do I why do I do this thing, <laughs> do this thing that I do? Um, so I I work as a uh, programmer, uh, computer programmer, software developer, more accurately. Um, I do not make games. I make uh, just business software. Uh, fun little fact is that game developers uh, do not get paid very well <laughs> for what they do, for all the crap that they have to put up with. Now, is this guy going to attack me once I do that? Nope, he's just going to stay there in the middle of the... He's floating in midair. I just can't hit him, no matter what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, a little fun fact is that uh, games, games developers do, really do not get paid very well uh, for what they do. Although it was game development that initially got me interested in uh, software development. Uh, it was not the thing that, uh, it, it was not the career that I really wanted to do. I just wanted to do something with computers. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with computers, just, just something. Um, and that is why I came upon uh, just basically doing business Productivity, software, business to business stuff, you know, nothing nothing that would be considered uh, consumer grade. Oh, I forgot that would fall down there. Uh, nothing that would be considered consumer grade stuff, although I have worked on some websites that uh, uh, you would probably know and probably have frequented, but I can't really talk about it because <laughs> they're not branded properly. They're branded for the store itself and not for the company that actually made it. Um, so it's not something you can really talk about and, and have anybody have any proof of it. <laughs> um, so we have that there. I, I need to move all this stuff too. I really shouldn't move that anvil in to the storage slash crafting area, but I, I kind of want to make a little, a little crafting area around here somewhere. Uh, I might even, I might even make that up there, the crafting area. Uh, and then make the kitchen area somewhere else because the bedroom's going to have to move up there, probably, um, and get it out of my living room. <laughs> I got a bed in my living room, uh, but I'll leave that there for the moment. Um, so yeah, the you know software development's what I do as far as uh, my my. <laughs> so I got involved in software development because I literally I literally stumbled on it. I had an affinity towards as a kid towards electronics and uh, I used to I used to be that kid that would you know play with a you know remote controlled toy and then you know after I got tired or, or bored of it I would uh, tear it apart and see how it worked. <laughs> that kind of kid. Yeah, you know, the pain in the ass kids. Yep, that was me. <laughs> Ungrateful pain in the ass kids. That was that was me. Uh, and to my to my parents' credit, they they let me, for the most part, get away with that. <laughs> I think they sort of understood that I was uh, I was exploring, and it was it was for the benefit of of myself that I be allowed to explore uh, certain things. And in fact. Uh, when they, <laughs> back in the day when we had VCRs and whatnot, uh, they actually, when they got a new VCR, uh, let me take apart the old one and, and just look at it and just figure out how things happen in there. I mean, I never quite understood how things worked in there, but I always liked see, I always liked tearing it apart just to look at it and, 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 you know, and just, uh, see what was going on in there. Like I, I took apart a, uh, my old NES at one point. And just to see how the cartridge went in and how it sat in there and how it uh, it married up with the daughter board that then allowed it to communicate with the with the um, 
motherboard in there and all that stuff. You know, cool things like that. I mean, I didn't, as I said, I didn't understand it all, but it was, it was, it was nice to be able to just see how things work. It's very interesting in how things work. And through a, a summer job uh, that I won't get into, I, uh, I, I discovered, I, I, I was, I talked to a person that, um, was very good with computers and they, you know, sort of very, very much enjoyed working with computers and they knew a lot more than I did about them. And, uh, and I had worked a little bit at that point. I had worked a little bit with computers. I had had my, my school had offered, you know, back in grade school had offered a sort of after school course that let us look at that. Actually, when I think back to it, it was actually trying to teach us how to program in basic, but it was, it was the old, um, what was it turtle turtle basic or whatever it was. It, you, you had a, a little turtle that you would move, you write commands in and he would move around the screen. It was basically just an asterisk that you would move around the screen and he would move based upon what commands you gave him and, and all that stuff. You know, you say move 13 or jump two or something like that. And he would jump around the screen and it was written in such a way that the, it was written like basic code. So, uh, you had to write line numbers in, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then the, the command, uh, and so on and so forth. And that's sort of that, that ignited the, the spark, if you will, that said, Hey, you know, this is kind of cool. I like, I like computers. And whenever I had computer classes, I always liked playing on the computers and just, uh, um, doing, you know, I think we used to do, we used to do like, uh, the old, uh, Oregon Trail software and all that stuff. Uh, and I just, I enjoyed the heck out of that. Um, just the, just the time being on the computer. And when it came time for me to figure out what I was going to do with my life, I naturally thought about, um, you know, I want to do something with computers. I didn't know what, and this was the, this was the thing that really got me was I didn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I just knew it had to be something with computers. And it never really dawned on me that computers were programmed, right? It was always like this sort of magical, mystical thing. Uh, I always figured that the person who put the hardware in the machine was the one who, who made the hardware, who, who made the software, basically, when it came to computers and whatnot. And I didn't realize that that was a, the hardware and the software were actually two separate disciplines uh, in and of themselves. And, and I went on thinking that for, for quite some time. Uh, it wasn't until I would say I was in high school and I had gotten my first computer, which I had bought myself. Uh, that was the stipulation my parents gave me. It was like, we don't have the money to put $2,000 down to get you a computer. So you have to get yourself a summer job and, uh, and pay for it yourself which was fine and dandy. I got myself a summer job. Actually, I got myself a job that I ended up having for about four years, actually, and not just in the summer. Uh, and then I, uh, I I saved up all my money and I bought my first computer. It was like Packard Bell 486 DX2, 66 megahertz computer. Had, um, what is it, four megs of RAM in it. Uh, it was... It was an all one system though, which ended up being a really <laughs> bad, bad, bad choice on my part. But I, you know, it was so cool. I just wanted, it was a computer. I didn't really care. I just wanted a computer for crying out loud. Um, and that's what I did. And I, and I got that and I spent the first, I would say six months or so basically doing everything wrong <laughs> with the computer. Like I had to reinstall the operating system and re uh, you know, and refresh it from, from the manufacturer's disc, uh, at least a dozen times, if not more, uh, that first year. But, uh, I learned how it worked. <laughs> In so doing that, I, there was, there was a good, a good result. 
Uh, and the re good result was that I knew, I sort of started to learn how things worked and what was and was not necessary for the operating system, uh, and so on and so forth. And um, it, uh, I, I still at that point though, within that first six months, I still, I knew in my head that I wanted to do something with computers. I just didn't know what. I always thought, oh, I'll just be a computer operator, whatever the hell that means. I'll just be a computer operator. Someone who just, who just works on the computer all day long because somebody's got to do it, <laughs> right? I figured it was just going to be like manual input typing or something like that. I, I didn't really care. I just wanted it to be something that involved the computer, which at this, at this point in time, we're talking, you know, uh, the late, late nineties at that point, uh, computers were still not a, they were not a common thing yet. They were becoming a common thing, but they were still a, a luxury item, right? They weren't a, something that was absolutely positively necessary for you to have any kind of career anywhere. Um, so it, it's, I was still unclear as to what I wanted to do. And as a stroke of lightning one day, I was, I was reading through a, a magazine, uh, a catalog actually from Electronics Boutique, which doesn't exist anymore. It's a, they were bought by GameStop uh, many, many years ago. Uh, some of you might remember, some of the older folks might remember like EB, EB World and all that stuff, the website and all that stuff that was Electronics Boutique. Um, they were basically what GameStop is. They were just, they would sell games. Um, and I was reading the catalog this one, you know, one night and I saw a, a thing in there. It said, uh, teach yourself game programming in 21 days. I believe it was a book that I still have, by the way, but I didn't know it was a book at the time. I, I just, it just looked like a package. I was like, Oh, what, what is this? You know, it just, it was just a box. I was like, oh, I, I, I got to go see this. And so I saved up a little, mo little bit of money. And then I went around to my local EB games and I, uh, I picked it up. It had, they had it in stock. It was in a big box. It was a heavy box. And I was like, oh, what the hell's in here? And uh, I went and just uh, pulled the trigger on it, brought it home. And it turns out it was a, a book, a regular, you know, written book. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a couple CDs. Uh, the book was Teach Yourself Game Programming in 21 Days by Andre Lemoth, I guess is how you pronounce his name. Uh, is As far as books go, as far as game programming books go, he's, he's actually fairly well known. Um, he, either like or hate his writing style. I particularly like his writing style. It's kind of tongue-in-cheekish. Uh, there are lots of people who, who don't, uh, and, and you know, it's, it is what it is for, for everybody. Hey, um, but, uh, that is, that was the, the snowball rolling down the hill moment <laughs> for me. Uh, that was, I didn't know what I was getting into, but at the end of it, I was very glad that I had seen that and that I had gotten into it. Um, Essentially, the book taught you uh, C, C programming, um, taught you all about the hardware. And this is what, this is what really, what, oh, I left this door open. I didn't realize I left the door open. Uh, this is what really, um, really captured my attention, right? Is that it talked a lot in depth about hardware, like how the mouse works. And these, these were the old style mouse with the, with the, the balls in them, <laughs> the balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so juvenile. Uh, these are the old style mouse with the ball in them and the trackball. And it showed you how it worked and how, how the computer measured the deflection of the track or the hardware measured the deflection of the trackball. And that's how it measured where the mouse should be on screen. And there, here's how you control the mouse. Um, and of course this was all DOS based stuff, right? So it wasn't, uh, it's not the Windows based stuff. I, I didn't learn Windows, how to program in Windows for a while after that. I actually learned that by just going out on my own and figuring out, uh, you know, going on websites and, and learning from other people who had, who had done it, um, 
how how that works. And uh, and I'm talking about not you know not the typical Windows programming you think about nowadays. I'm talking about GDI programming. You know, actually using the actual commands in Windows to to do things in uh, the actual uh, callbacks and stuff in Windows uh, through a regular regular old C C prompt or not C prompt. <laughs> oh my my words they're not they're not here anymore uh <laughs> through a regular c uh c program so it basically ooh i didn't realize that was open to the air there so it basically taught me um how to write programs in c uh for the purpose of writing games and uh in so doing i learned how to how to write uh, general C programs and then that uh, oh by the way on the on the CDs uh, so I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here because I'm trying to build and also talk at the same time um, on the CDs came a free C compiler a visual C++ 1.0 uh, and there were various game demos on there to give you inspiration so for instance it had most of the um, Apogee, the old Apogee games like uh, uh, the original Duke Nukem and Duke Nukem 2, uh, Duke Nukem, no, 3D wasn't on there, but Duke Nukem uh, 2, and then uh, Epic Pinball, uh, Jill the Jungle, uh, what else? Um, uh, I can't, I can't think of some of the other things. There was, there were quite a few of the, uh, I think. Was Jazz Jackrabbit on that one? I think Jazz Jackrabbit was on that one, which wasn't... I don't think that was an Apogee game, though, but it might have been. Uh, and then there was also a, a fighter ship game on there, uh, a shoot 'em up And I, I the name escapes me now because I saw this recently on GOG, and I was like, oh, my God, I, I, I have not seen this game in ages. I should pick this up. And I, I didn't pick it up, but I forgot the name of it now. <laughs> um... But uh, those, so it had, that was my introduction also to a lot of those old Epigee games, <laughs> which was pretty funny because uh, they were there just as inspiration to help you, give you ideas as to how, you know, what kind of games you want to play or want to build, want to make. Uh, so that was, that was fantastic uh, just as, as a learning thing. And um, let me think what else. What else was there? Uh, and then beyond that, everything else was just here's how to here here's your here's your compiler and just you know go to town do what you do what you want to do. Um, and I did, and I went you know I, I wrote some things in DOS. It was back in the day we were, were you know I was had Windows ninety five at the time. I was the old holdout. I didn't go to Windows ninety eight. I went straight to two thousand. Um, and then I. Uh, so I did mostly, you know, DOS mode stuff like uh, getting the video card into the mode 13H, which was like 320 by 200, but it was a um, it was 320 by 200 with 16 16 colors, 16 colors, yeah, 16 colors. <laughs> it was 8 bit. No, it was 8 bit color, but it was yeah. I guess yeah. I guess it was 16. Yeah, I I have to. It's been ages and ages since I've since I thought about it. But yeah, I had had those. So and the thing with Mode Thirteen H was that it was easier to to learn how to program in how to program games in because it uh, it was just one um, one uh, array basically in memory. Some of the other modes like uh, Mode X. And whatnot uh, required you to page flip and flip in other memory pages in order to uh, properly do double buffering. Whereas, mo or not even just double du buffer, double buffering, but also to do uh, just to to access the entire screen, the entire video screen. And Mo 13H had the advantage of just everything started at. Um, a zero 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 offset zero 
and went all the way to offset uh, FFFF, I believe. And you could just blast uh, bits right into right into that memory space, and it would just get you know immediately picked up by the video card and and shuffled off to the video screen. So it was it was the easiest mode to deal with um, in terms of when you were learning stuff. Uh, some of the other ones required a lot a lot more trickery. Um, but yeah, I, that's that's how I got interested in 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 uh, in writing uh, software. And uh, it was it was because of games I got interested in that. Um, and beyond that, I was I was not so unlike most college guys, <laughs> I, I when I started college, I already knew what I wanted to do, which uh, let me tell you, saves you a bundle of money because <laughs> you don't have to switch majors all the time. Um, but uh, because of that, I also, there, there were some 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 problems with that too, and that was that because I knew what I wanted to do, I had already started um, learning stuff on my own, and so when I got into college, uh, the professors, whenever I would you know get a computer science class in my career curriculum, which was very hard to do because they they keep throwing damn general studies crap at you that you you had hundred times already in school and they just they just feel like they need to extract more money from from the stone that is your brain um, so it's uh, I was very frustrated in college I didn't really hang out too much with people I just kind of just come came and did my thing I also had to work full-time just to pay for college because uh, I'm not I am not a smart smart person I, I got a scholarship um, I got the scholarship mostly because the school was looking for to expand its comp sci program and they were willing to basically take anybody they could I, I had good gr well I had fairly good grades in high school I was I think 23rd in my class when I graduated so it wasn't I wasn't a slouch by any means I also wasn't really bright either and I still I'm still not <laughs> I just I, I exude some some brightness that I that's not really there <laughs> I just I just do my thing and and hope that I don't get called out on it <laughs> it's, what, it's what it comes down to uh, and when I do I apologize greatly <laughs> um, it's just uh, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily fake. It's just that I just I don't um, I did not have a very good time in school in general uh, growing up. It was you know I was a nerd, I was a geek, a dweeb. Um, I still am all three of those things at once. I am I am the ultimate triple threat. Um, and when I first started out in school, I was I was picked on, as you as you might imagine. Uh, as I got older, it kind of stopped because the other advantage that I had that most geeks don't have is that I was unnaturally tall, unnaturally large for my age. Um, I was when I started high school, I was already over six foot tall. And I'll just give you an example of of uh, what I how freakishly freakishly large I actually am um, I am I'm only six foot four but I had already pretty much um, gone through puberty and stuff by the time I got into high school so my voice had already changed I wasn't squeaky squeaky McSqueakington um, I you know whereas some of my friends were still going through it uh, and got picked on uh, endlessly because of it unfortunately uh, kids are, kids are brutal. Uh, it's it's a known fact. Uh, it's it's a shame too, but it, it's just there isn't much you can do about it other than other than live and learn. Um, and so I didn't have to deal so much with that. Uh, I did have to deal with the fact that I never felt like I could talk to anybody. Um, I I am I am an introvert. I was an introvert back then as well. I was 
fairly isolated by my own my own uh, uh, choice from people um, and I still am and it still is by my own choice I just never really felt comfortable uh, in crowds even with people that I know uh, I've never really felt comfortable with and that's just that's just me that's just how I how I roll and so I spent the majority of my growing up just basically with my nose in a book trying to uh, get myself prepared for for the larger the larger issues in life and it's funny to say that too because I uh, when I <laughs> there's a story that my mom always tells because she's she's uh, very proud of herself for what what happened and I'm very proud of her too but uh, she uh, basically had to stand up to one of my teachers early on because they wanted to hold me back like we're talking like first or second grade I think um, because I was not mature enough because she perceived that I was not mature enough for my group and um, you know my mom said basically hell no because <laughs> that's, that's how my mom rolls and uh, very very good with that with that kind of thing um, and it's a good thing she did because you know basically she said you know what it's it's a growing thing he'll grow out of it he'll figure it out and I did I did figure it out what I figured out though was that basically there are topics you talk about with strangers and there are topics you talk about with yourself and nobody else <laughs> uh, and I learned that even though I like to geek out and talk about geeky topics I have to figure out what crowd I'm in first before I talk about them uh, otherwise you just get those funny looks and people don't uh, want to deal with you because they think that you're some kind of social outcast um, <laughs> and so does my tablet think I'm a social outcast uh, <laughs> um, so it's so I learned from an early age that that was basically I learned to become a bit of a chameleon I guess where I can sort of change up myself my attitude if you will for whatever crowd that I'm in um, the downfall that it, it's a good thing to have because it means that I can make friends relatively easily um, the downfall to it is that I, I if you ask me what my personality is I couldn't tell you because I don't know <laughs> I really don't know I, I've one of the reasons I started this YouTube thing, uh, I started to do this YouTube thing, is because I'm hoping that if I if I talk enough, if I do this enough, if I force myself to interact enough um, with uh, the internet <laughs> in large, at large, that I would somehow figure out what exactly personality I have, and perhaps even develop one that does not, you know, that is something more than just that of a potted plant <laughs> in the corner um, and whether or not I'm succeeding at that is yet to be is yet to be determined but it is it is something that uh, rides on my mind quite a bit um, being as though I am an introvert I tend to uh, internalize a lot of stuff and did I just put stone bricks in there yep I did yep I did I tend to internalize a lot of stuff. And I tend to do these internal checkpoints where I'm like, "Hey, what am I? What am I really? Why am I really doing this? What, what's what's really going on in my brain? Why am I the way that I am?" <laughs> uh, I have no answers. I have only questions. <laughs> but suffice it to say, this is this is what I have convinced myself uh, to this to this date is uh, as to who I am and why I'm doing this. Um, and uh, I, I think that's, I think that's about all I could really. Uh, you know what? I wonder if I could go up one more with this. If that would look kind of cool. You know what? Let's go up one more here. I'll smooth out some of these edges, I think. But I just, I'm just trying some things out right now. And I might not do this in stone bricks either. I might do this uh, in something else. I just want to see what it looks like at the moment. 
I'm just doing my whole, you know, let me, let me just get it looking like something and then I can make it look so, like something better later. Well, it's not that bad, I guess. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to figure something out though, because I don't know. I was kind of thinking I could put stairs, like upside down stairs up there, but I might just leave it that way, because that actually looks doesn't look that bad. Although I might change it to something other than stone bricks, uh, as I said earlier. I really want to get rid of a lot of this um, granite and stuff too. I'm going to I'm going to end up inserting a lot of the granite back in as polished granite, and I'm going to do sort of like what I did in the last season, where I'm going to make like little patterns along the way with this the granite and the diorite and all that stuff. But right now I just want to uh, I want to clean it up a little bit so I can see what I've got here, so I can know what kind of patterns I, I'd like to make. And it's hard to see it when it still looks like a cave. <laughs> uh, at least for at least for my eyes, it's it's hard to see it when it still looks like a cave. Um. So I that that I think that about sums up uh, the the highlights of my childhood. It wasn't there wasn't a whole lot <laughs> to my childhood other than. Um, a whole lot of me just trying to learn how to do things, uh, teaching myself how to do things. I and again, I'm a, I'm a very uh, isolated person uh, by choice. I I don't really deal well with people, which is why I've been regretting or not regretting, but dreading this whole trip I have to this business trip I have to go on next week. It's it's been. It's been working on my mind quite a bit, and it it it, uh, it just it bothers me that it, it works on my mind so much. Because there's other people that, you know, do this thing all the time. They just, you know, it's it's no big deal. But for some reason, for me, um, I just don't like I don't like uh, being sort of forced into social situations. I like to take them as I as I can. You know, just just go with the the flow that I have and not you know if I feel like being out in public then I'll be out in public if I don't feel like it which is most of the time then I then I don't and I hate being I hate when the choice is is taken away from me uh, because it feels like uh, it feels like I, I don't like I'm not an adult <laughs> you know what I mean I spent the majority of my childhood uh, trying to trying to be an adult and now that I'm an adult I kind of spend my most of my adulthood trying to remain an adult <laughs> it's I, I don't know uh, and yet I sit here and I play games because I enjoy them it's a nice little it's a nice way to to get away from some of the craziness uh, some of the some of the mental um, not not anguish, but the mental tiredness you get uh, as a as an introverted person just from day to day as you're trying to just go about your normal tasks. Um, you know, because obviously I work in an office building. I have to, I still have to interact with people, uh, and I don't, I don't, you know, I don't hate the people I interact with. I, I like, I like interacting. Uh, I just like interacting on my own terms and when I don't do it on my own terms it uh, it becomes a sort of draining uh, experience for me uh, where I, I just feel I feel like I drain faster uh, whereas if I if I had the choice I could uh, prepare myself ahead of time and and and, and uh, not be so uh, so unprepared or so 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 mentally drained by some of it, uh, but that is that is me in a nutshell. Um, it's not I, I'm not a very I'm not a very complicated person to be honest with you. Uh, I am very very simple, very simple minded person. Uh, again, I, I don't have any problems with that. Um, 
sometimes sometimes it's good to just be a little simple minded. <laughs> it it helps you to not worry about things that you can't control, um, things that are out of your control. Because uh, I see a lot of people, you know, a lot of people sort of stress out about things all the time, and and I I have believe it or not, um, very little stress in my life. I have I have stress right now. Um, because of some things that are happening. Ooh, Puka is, is doing, doing some swan dives. <laughs> Look out below. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, <laughs> without armor. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I, I don't know what else to, I don't know what else to say about that. Um, there are other things that I might, that I'll talk about in another episode. Cause I don't want to be this, I don't want this, this episode's already about an hour long. <laughs> I just, I just looked over. I'm like, yep, I've been talking for an hour. It's, it's, it's official. Um, so I'll save some more stuff for later. I, I can talk about some, uh, like the TV shows I used to watch and some of the, uh, some of the things I used to do, uh, you know, as a kid and whatnot. Uh, but I figured, you know, figured it doesn't hurt to get a little, a little background information on the people that you watch. Um, so, and in the process of doing that, I've gotten this place looking a little bit different. Again, this is not the final look. I want to do something different with the walls. Uh, than what I've done, although I was I was just experimenting with this little pattern here, which looks kind of cool. But I have a feeling all this stone brick is going to go, all this stone is going to go away as well when I do what I want to do. So uh, as far as the the schedule goes, uh, I'm probably going to just have one episode this week again uh, because I'm still collecting resources and stuff, and it's it it does take a bit of time to to do this. This is. This is the problem with sandbox games is they take a lot of time to just do some basic things. Um, so I'm probably only going to have one episode for there. And uh, I do, I am probably going to make an announcement at some point about what I'm doing with my schedule. Because I have a feel, I have a, an idea for something I want to change up um, as far as how I approach the schedule. The schedule itself is not really going to change. It's just how I approach the schedule that's going to change. Um, so I just, I'm, I'm going to leave that for a little update episode, a little update video. Um, but in the meantime, we'll continue on with this. I think next time I'll either work in here a little bit more or I'll finally mercifully <laughs> complete that, um, what's going on up above and maybe start the wall. So the, the entryway to the, to the area. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.